Breaking news today. U.S. Worries exacerbated by Russia China alliance. Xi Jinping, President of China, visited Russia's capital last month. The visit can be seen as President Xi and President Putin's ongoing effort to forge closer ties between their countries. China and Russia, already in what has been called a partnership of no limits, are quickly emerging as two of the greatest beneficiaries of the conflict in Ukraine. Rather than President Biden and his G7 partners' goal of B3W, build back better world, President Putin and President Xi's goal of B3AO, bring back balance and order in the world, is poised to become one of the most important geopolitical goals of this century thanks to the Ukrainian crisis. Rather than dividing the world into autocratic and democratic zones, Xi and Putin think of it in terms of order and chaos. Both presidents blame the United States for the world's anarchy and violence because of the unipolar moment the planet has been experiencing over the past two decades. Great land powers China, a rising power, and Russia, a resurgent power, have their work cut out for them. The United States rose to prominence after it began forcibly redrawing international borders. After constructing the Panama Canal, which linked the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, it conquered and annexed numerous territories and islands in the Western Hemisphere, including the Central Pacific Ocean's most strategically significant island, Hawaii. The United States has today secured a post-war status quo that benefits only itself and not the rising and resurgent powers elsewhere around the world. This is seen as geopolitical greed by both China and Russia, who believe that the United States and its allies should be given a smooth ride within the international system while any revisionist power that challenges this system should be given a very rough ride indeed. The recent issuance of an arrest warrant for Putin by the International Criminal Court, ICC, is indicative of the unfairness of this international system, which was designed by the United States. When did neither President Bush nor President Obama receive such directives? Were war crimes not committed during their presidency in Afghanistan and Iraq? Russia and China didn't make the decisions that led to the current global disorder. The United States and its allies did. In order to prevent the Soviet Union, and later China and a revitalized Russia, from closing the gap on the global power disparity, the United States and its allies cooperated in the economic and security realms, NATO being the largest and most powerful security organization in the world, to create the current international order. When the eastern part of the world is left impoverished and devastated by the unipolar moment in history, it is not a crime to propose an alternative vision for global governance. Here we can see the significance of Xi's comment made in Russia. He advised Putin, let's drive the change together, because the world is transforming rapidly. President Putin responded with a, I agree. Russian and Chinese leaders share an alternative vision of global governance based on multipolarity rather than unipolarity. The United States believes that for China and Russia to have a meaningful partnership, it must involve cooperation in a wide variety of areas, not just the purchase of oil and hunting firearms. The United States views this cooperation as primarily pragmatic rather than strategic. If the latter were the case, the two countries would have formed an alliance. This is a flawed American perspective, as the United States' current foreign policy is being driven entirely by the challenges posed by Russia and China. The United States is currently keeping a close eye on China to prevent it from providing military aid to Russia. The Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act was passed by the United States Congress in 2017 with the stated goal of limiting and preventing military assistance and cooperation between Russia and China. Theorists are important in statecraft, but practitioners are even more crucial. What could be on the agenda of the discussion between the two strategic and no-limits partners can be gleaned from the Russian president's team that met their counterpart during the Chinese president's visit to Moscow. Russian representatives included Defense Minister Sergei Shigu, Federal Service for Military Technical Cooperation Head Dmitry Shugayev, Russian Space Agency Chief Yuri Borisov, and Minister of Science and Technology Dmitry Chernyshenko. Former President Medvedev represented Putin as his deputy in the Presidential Commission on the Military-Industrial Complex. According to their resumes, 
the men on Putin's team weren't discussing whether or not to build a Disneyland in Moscow or a Walt Disney World Resort in St. Petersburg. Rather, they were discussing ways in which the two countries can work together to outmaneuver the United States in the global commons. Even if the United States believes it has the power to set the rules for the next round of global geopolitical competition, it should not underestimate the combined might of Russia and China. Both countries are actively working to create a counterbalance on different continents. In Latin America and Africa, their diplomatic speed and dedication are at least on par with those of the West. Both countries are well equipped to deal with any U.S. aggression that causes a global upheaval that Washington does not seek. Russia and China together present the United States with a significant geopolitical challenge. Not only is the question of whether or not to cooperate with them or seek conflicts central to U.S. foreign policy, but the answer to this question will determine whether or not the world in which our children and grandchildren live will be peaceful and stable.